bodies are more like ecosystems than they are like organisms. There are a great many beings which call your body home, such as microorganisms and bacteria. You are indivisible from them because they cannot exist without you and you cannot exist without them. But what most people don't know is that your cells and organs of your body are no different. They're endowed with their own consciousness, their own personalities even. The you that you call by your name is really the collection of all of these things. You are in essence a small-scale collective consciousness. Understanding your body in this way is really important. To vitality, to health, to life itself. It's really important that you connect with the separate parts of the ecosystem that is your body. And one of the parts of this ecosystem of your body that's the most important to connect with is your heart. The heart is the first organ to form when the body is developing in utero. When an embryo is made up of only a very few cells, each cell can get the nutrients it needs directly from its surroundings. But as the cells divide and multiply to form a growing body, it soon becomes impossible for nutrients to reach all the cells efficiently without help. The cells also produce waste that they need to get rid of. So the heart and the blood and the circulatory system that branch off from the heart form the first organ system to develop. They are essential to carry nutrients and waste around the embryo to keep its cells alive. The heart is the connection between all future systems that are to form in the body. This is why it is so often seen as the center of your being. You can use the heart as a doorway between physical and non-physical reality. In other words, it is the doorway between your soul and your physical body. You can also use the heart to send energy to all parts of your body much like it sends blood to all parts of your body. I want to introduce you to an exercise that you can use on any part of your body, but today we're going to use it on the heart. So to begin with, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to place your hands one on top of the other, straight over your heart. Your heart is located right under your sternum in the center of your chest. And for a minute, I want you to just feel, on an emotional level, on a sensation level, what your heart feels like. If I was to mention one of your friends, the names of them, you would instantly associate a sensation with that friend, your idea of that friend. That sensation is what we call an energetic signature. Your heart, and every organ in your body really, also has a signature. It's how you identify that person as different from everyone else you know, or that organ as different from every other organ. Close your eyes and imagine your heart as a separate being that lives inside you. What does your heart feel like? If your heart were a living being, what personality would this being have? Feel free to visualize your heart as an actual mini-being, or even as a mini-person if you wish. What would this being want? What would this being dislike? Does this being feel appreciated and loved? Or does it feel ignored and undervalued? Just take some time to be with your heart exactly as it is right here and now and exactly as it feels without needing it to be different. There's no right or wrong way to have a conversation with your heart. Intuitively you know exactly how to do that. But I am going to set forth an example of how you might have a conversation with your heart. Begin by asking your heart directly, what makes you unhappy? What do you need me to do differently? If you could have one wish, what would it be? And, what do you have to tell me? You will receive the answers on an intuitive level. Either you will hear the answers, or you will see them in your mind's eye, or you will just know the answers because they will pop up in your consciousness. Next, it is your turn to address your heart. 
Acknowledge the concerns which your heart expressed to you. Explain to your heart that you value its perspective and its needs and its wants. After all, your heart represents the perspective of your true self. What do you think your heart needs to hear? Tell that to your heart. You can speak to your heart inside your mind's eye if you don't wish to speak out loud. Next, take steps to fulfill the wish that your heart expressed. Keep in mind this might not be something that can be accomplished in one sitting. It might, for example, be a lifestyle change that your heart wants you to make. Once you feel as if you have reached a place of understanding with your heart, take some time to express gratitude for your heart and for its very special purpose, keeping you full of life, keeping you vital. And then I want you to visualize either gratitude or love flowing into your heart. Imagine that energy being soaked up by the heart and then pumped through the rest of the body. Imagine that love being diffused through all of the capillaries, the blood vessels, the arteries and veins, into every other organ in your body, because the heart is the one that is carrying the love there throughout the totality of your being. Imagine that love soaking into every other organ and every other tiny little cell. Just before you are ready to come back into the room, make a promise to your heart if you feel ready that you will always be available to talk to. A promise that you will fulfill its wishes, that you agree with its perspective because you acknowledge the fact that it represents the truth of your being. When you're ready to complete the exercise, I want you to take four deep breaths, inhaling the oxygen completely into your lungs and allowing the oxygen to completely exit your lungs. After you've done this four times, you can wiggle your toes and your fingers and come back into the room by opening your eyes. The more connected you are with your heart, the more connected you are with your personal truth and the more connected you are with your soul. Connecting with your heart is an essential part of your spiritual progression because the heart bears the burden of all the trauma on an emotional level that you have experienced throughout your life. Relieving that trauma is the byproduct of reconnecting with your heart and taking care of its needs and wants and listening to it. Whether we like it or not, we are in a relationship with our heart. Our heart is our best friend. More than that, it is our life partner. It is essential that we treat the relationship with our heart like we would treat a relationship with a significant other. We need to nurture the relationship and strengthen the connection. Have a good week.